the M1 iMac aims to be the best all-in-one solution for the vast majority of users, offering more than enough performance and important day-to-day -day features like a high-quality 4.5K display, 1080p camera, 3 microphone array, built-in speaker system, and the powerful M1 processor. In this video, we'll take a look at the M1 iMac and go through tips and tricks you may not know about when using a Mac computer. Macs come with apps for almost anything and everyone. The M1 and Mac OS Big Sur let you run many iPhone and iPad apps right on your Mac. With the new iMac, you'll get a matched keyboard, mouse, and trackpad. In addition to the new Spotlight, Dictation, and Do Not Disturb keys, Magic Keyboard now has Emoji Key as well. Apple has incorporated Touch ID for the very first time on iMac, which makes it easy to unlock your device, use Apple Pay, and download apps. By using Apple Sidecar, your iPad can be used as an external display for your Mac. The connection is completely wireless, and it takes just a few seconds to set it up. You'll need your iPad to run iPadOS 13 or later. Sidecar can be turned on in a few different ways by placing your iPad near your Mac. You're able to easily do this by going to Control Center, Display, and selecting your iPad. The Sidecar settings can also be accessed from the System Preferences menu. As an extension of your Mac, the iPad can act as a second screen, allowing you to place more web pages and apps on it. If you go back to Sidecar View while using your iPad or other apps, the connection won't break. When you plan on using the iPad for an extended period of time, you may want to connect it to your Mac using a cable. By using text message forwarding, you can receive and send text messages from your iPhone to your Mac. The conversation can then be continued on your Mac. You can access messaging on the iPhone, iPad, or iPad Touch by going to Settings, Messages, Send and Receive. On your Mac, open Messages, choose Messages, Preferences, then click iMessage. Verify that your Apple ID is signed in to iMessage on all your devices. On your iPhone, go to Settings, Messages, Text Message Forwarding. You can select which devices can send your iPhone text messages. If you don't have two-factor authentication for your Apple ID, each of your other devices will display a verification code. Enter that code onto your iPhone. Can't find a text message forwarding setting on your iPhone? You need to enable iMessage by going to Settings, Messages, turning it off, then on again. Tapping Send and Receive, tapping Use your Apple ID for iMessage, and logging in with the same Apple ID that's associated with the rest of your devices. When your iPhone and Mac are both connected to the same network, calling from those devices is possible using the iPhone Cellular Calls feature. All Macs that meet the Continuity System requirements can make iPhone cell calls. It works if your devices are within range of each other and set up as follows. Each device is signed in to iCloud with the same Apple ID. Each device is signed into FaceTime with the same Apple ID. Each device has Wi-Fi turned on. Each device is connected to the same network using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. On your phone, go to Settings, Phone, Calls on other devices, then turn on Allow Calls on other devices. On your iPad or iPod Touch, go to Settings, FaceTime, then turn on Calls for iPhone. On your Mac, open the FaceTime app, then choose FaceTime, Preferences, click on Settings, then select Calls from iPhone. The iPhone doesn't have to be on you to make and receive calls when other devices are enabled with Wi-Fi calling. There's a feature on Mac OS that's often overlooked, but it makes scanning documents or importing photos into documents a snap. You can check if an app supports this function by right-clicking in a text field and checking for a section where your nearby iPhone is listed. For example, on my iPhone, I'm presented with three options when right-clicking in a page's document. Take a photo, scan document, or add a sketch. Once you've chosen your preferred option, unlock your iPhone or iPad. Based on your selection, the appropriate screen will be opened, and when you're done, it will be added to your document. Wearing an Apple Watch makes your Mac aware of your proximity and logs you in automatically. Other password requests can also be approved using Apple Watch. The auto unlock feature works when you're wearing your unlocked watch and are extremely close to your Mac. Move your watch closer if it's needed. With Apple Watch Remote Access, you can access your Mac from wherever you are. Your Mac starts up automatically, so you don't have to type a password. If you're logging in for the first time after starting up, you're starting or updating your Mac, you must enter your password manually. Once that's done, Apple Watch will log you in. To enable auto-unlock on your Mac or Apple Watch, 
Make sure you meet the system requirements. Make sure that your following settings are set up on your Apple devices. Your Mac has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on. Your Mac and Apple Watch are signed into iCloud with the same Apple ID, and your Apple ID is using two-factor authentication. Your Apple Watch is using a passcode. Choose Apple Menu, System Preferences, then click Security and Privacy. Select Use your Apple Watch to unlock apps and your Mac, or Allow your Apple Watch to unlock your Mac. In order to determine if your Mac is compatible with Auto Unlock, hold the Option key while choosing Apple Menu, System Information. Select Wi-Fi in the sidebar, then look for Auto Unlock, Supported, on the right-hand side. You may have been using a feature called Continuity already, without even knowing it. As the name implies, Apple's gadgets are linked together, allowing you to continue your task on your Mac where you left off on your iPhone. Continuity can even be as simple as taking a phone call on your Mac. However, handoff is what I find most useful and valuable about continuity. You may have seen an icon appear and disappear on the right side of your Mac's app dock. This is Handoff. By clicking on that app on your Mac, you can open any app on your iPhone, Apple Watch, or iPad. For instance, you can write an email on your iPhone, then finish it off on your Mac by clicking on the Mail app icon. The Compose window opens where you left off on your iPhone. A lot of times, I copy on text on one device, but need to paste it in a text field on another device. If your Mac and iPhone are in close proximity, you can copy an item on your Mac and paste it on your iPhone without doing anything special, and vice versa. This also works on the iPad as well. All Mac, iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch models meeting the continuity system requirements can use Universal Clipboard. Your devices must be in close proximity and set up as follows. Each device is signed into iCloud with the same Apple ID. Each device has Bluetooth turned on, each device has Wi-Fi turned on. Each device has Handoff turned on. Here's how to turn on Handoff on your device. On your Mac, choose Apple Menu, System Preferences, then click General. Select Allow Handoff between this Mac and your iCloud devices. On using Universal Clipboard, just like you would normally copy text, images, or other content to one device, the Universal Clipboard can be used to copy documents from one Mac to another. Your other nearby device automatically adds the content to its clipboard. It remains there for a short time, or until another file is copied onto the device. AirDrop enables you to wirelessly share documents, photos, videos, websites, map locations, and more to a Mac, iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch nearby. To share content with AirDrop, in the app window, select the file you want to send, then click the Share button, or control click in Finder and choose Share from the shortcut menu. Choose AirDrop from the sharing options listed, choose a recipient for the AirDrop sheet, or open an AirDrop window, then drag files to the recipient. Select AirDrop in the sidebar of a Finder window, or choose Go, AirDrop from the menu bar. Nearby AirDrop users can be discovered via AirDrop's window. Select the recipient shown in the window and drag documents, photos, and other files to them. You can use your iPhone or iPad with cellular as a personal hotspot for your devices. By using Instant Hotspot, the personal hotspot on your iPhone or iPad can allow internet access to a Mac, iPhone, iPad, or iPad Touch devices without requiring you to enter a password. Use Instant Hotspot on any Mac, iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. There's an activated carrier plan for your iPhone or iPad that gives you access to personal hotspot. Each device is signed into an iCloud with the same ID, has Bluetooth turned on, and has Wi-Fi turned on. To use Instant Hotspot, here's how to connect your personal hotspot. The Wi-Fi status menu on your Mac provides the option of selecting the iPhone or iPad that's providing your personal hotspot. Just click the corresponding icon in the menu bar. You may be asked for a password when using your connected devices. Make sure your devices are configured as described above. When your device remains connected to your personal hotspot, the Wi-Fi status icon changes to the personal hotspot icon in the menu bar. Like you've seen in my previous videos, I've opted for the blue iMac. In a new feature only available on the new iMacs, you can change the Mac OS accent colors. By clicking on Apple, System Preferences, and clicking on General, you can change the system color and you'll notice the folders, and when you highlight and unhighlight documents, the color changes to the theme that you chose. The M1 iMac is definitely packed with lots of features. 
in case you missed it, you can watch my one month review of the M1 iMac where I go through the new design and its performance. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all the latest videos. Are any of you guys using an M1 Mac yet? If so, which one did you choose and what features did you enjoy the most? Let me know in the comments section down below and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.